In 1984, the first of what would be a nine series slasher film debuted. This was the film A Nightmare on Elm Street. This of course is a cult classic film about a dead serial killer who comes back to life in spirit form and kills his victims in their dreams using a gloved hand with razors on them. He also notoriously wears a hat. And of course, this character's name is Freddy Krueger. But what if I told you Freddy Krueger was based on a true phenomenon, a phenomenon that happens to a lot of people, including myself? It's probably happened to you too, or someone you know at some point. Now, before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a link to Patreon down below. I also want to say I appreciate everyone who's sending me emails and commenting. I am trying to respond to all the comments and all the emails. As we get more and more subscribers on this channel, I might have to stop responding to the comments and just look towards my emails. If you have sent me an email and I have not responded yet, I promise you, I'm not ignoring you. It's just taken me a while to get through everything and I will eventually get back to you. I appreciate all you guys and I'm so happy that you're all joining this community. We have a lot of fun on this channel. I also want to give a special thank you to, to David Zublik. I did my second episode with him yesterday over the Georgia Guidestones. I am going to be coming on his channel once a week to discuss some really fun topics and I will link his channel down below if you're not familiar with David's work. David has a great channel. He's been doing this for a really really long time and there's a lot of really really interesting stuff that he has to present he also brings on some really awesome guests too and with that being said let's get started welcome to esoteric atlanta my name is bryce and today we're going to be talking about the phenomenon of shadow people and the hat man Coast to Coast AM is a radio late night talk show. It is an extremely popular show. Weekly Coast to Coast AM gets about 2.75 million listeners. Now this show, this radio show, was created by a man named Art Bell. Art Bell is a fairly famous man in the fringe community. And in fact, most of the topics that Art Bell spoke about were paranormal. Now, of course, in doing so, he had a lot of very interesting guests on his show. And it was on April 12th, 2001, that Art Bell had a Native American elder that went by the name Thunderstrikes on the show to discuss the phenomenon of shadow people. Now, from what I understand, Art Bell brought on this special guest because he had received a lot of information from listeners of the program about being haunted by these entities. Now, of course, these entities are figures that appear in a shadow form. They are obviously not from this world. A lot of people will confuse them with ghosts, but if you have experienced a shadow person like I have, and you've also experienced a ghost like I have, then you definitely know that there is a difference between the two. And in fact, there are a lot of cultures and a lot of religions that will describe these shadow people as beings from the underworld. Now, Thunderstrike's interview with Art Bell, I will place below in the description box. You can link to it and listen to it for yourself. There's a lot of information there. So much information that I'm really just gonna skim the surface. I don't have any Native American in me. I don't have a heritage in the Native American culture. And so I'm gonna try to do my best to explain shadow people the way a Thunder Strikes did in this interview. Again, I apologize if I get anything wrong. I am trying my best. According to a Thunder Strikes, the first recorded mention of this shadow people phenomenon happened in 1153 BC. Very, very, very long time ago. 
Thunderstrike did mention that everything that's happening, especially with the shadow people now in present time, has a lot to do with the prophecy that we're living in. Now, I find this really, really fascinating, and I actually want to go back and listen to this interview a couple more times, because again, this took place in 2001. In fact, this took place before September of 2001, if you know what I mean. Thunderstrike mentioned a prophecy in the Native American heritage that said from 1980 to the year 2000, we would be living in this time of awakening. I was born in 1983, so according to this prophecy, myself, my sister, and many people around my age were born during the time of massive awakening. I know in a lot of our present day conversations, we're talking about we're talking about now being the awakening, but according to him, that was back from 1980 to 2000. From the year 2000 to present, we are living in the quickening. And so that means that our time is actually moving faster. I can agree that sounds legitimate. I do feel like time is moving a lot faster. And we do know, especially those who are interest of us who are interested in fringe topics, time is relative. It's relative, right? Now, according to the Native American philosophy, all of this quickening would come to a head in the year 2012. We know this from the Mayan prophecies too, and a lot of people will scoff at that, But because of course, for us, 2012, nothing happened. However, what we forget is that we did change calendars at a certain point over in Europe. And so a lot of occultists will tell you that this year isn't 2020. The year we're living in now is actually 2012. But anyway, according to Thunderstrikes, because of this quickening, because of time moving faster, we also have developed a faster metabolism, a faster energy. Now we know that the body is energy, just as the earth is energy, just as the universe is energy. And because of this quickening of energy, from what I understand, what I think he was saying is that the veil is lifting. Now we've talked about this, the apocalypse means to lift the veil, to reveal, right? And so according to Thunderstrike, these shadow people live in a fifth dimension reality. It's a parallel reality to our own reality. Now for us, the fifth dimension pretty much lives with us while we're in our dream state. And sometimes when we're seeing these beings, it can be at a time where, in, where we're in between waking up and falling asleep or vice versa. Now, according to Thunderstrikes, we also see the shadow people with our third eye, meaning that most of us are more typed into our natural intuition or psychic ability than science gives us credit for. Now, according to a Thunderstrike, these shadow people are almost like vampires. They feed off of us. Whenever we're experiencing a negative emotion or projecting negativity or fear or anger is usually what gives these beings the power to slip through the veil. Now, this, as Thunderstrike said, might not necessarily be a bad thing. Sometimes these being, beings will eat the negative emotion so it doesn't exist anymore. This whole interview with Thunderstrike on Art Bell's show, Coast to Coast, opened up Pandora's box, so to speak. All of a sudden, the station was flooded in with even more people talking about their experiences with shadow people and another entity called the hat man. A lot of times people think shadow people and the hat man are the same thing. They are not. I have experienced both. The hat man is not a ghost-like shadow. The hat man is three-dimensional. He is an actual being. And according to Heidi Hollis, another guest on Art Bell's show Coast to Coast, the hat man is what inspired Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, I really enjoy Heidi Hollis. She is like the savant when it comes to shadow people and hat man. And I'm gonna leave a link to her website. I'm gonna leave a, a link to her books on Amazon. And I'm gonna leave a link to her social media in the description box below so that you can 
read more about her and her life's work trying to understand shadow people and hat men. Now, Heidi Hollis is definitely a woman after my own heart. She has had so many experiences with these beings, as have I, and she's very, very, very open about it. And I really respect that because when you are allowed to experience things that are weird or maybe fringe, keeping quiet about it isn't doing anybody any service. So, so many people have experiences and they think they're going crazy or they don't, people won't listen to them. But because of Heidi, she has given people tools from her experience on how to work with these beings when you happen to come across them. Now, one of the biggest arguments from skeptics is that what you're dealing with when you experience shadow people or a hat man is sleep paralysis. I have dealt with sleep paralysis as well. Basically, from what I understand, sleep paralysis when you're when you go into your deepest place of sleep the REM your body becomes almost paralyzed it's healing itself but what happens with sleep paralysis is that your mind starts to wake up before your body wakes up and so your mind is awake but your body feels like it's being pinned down now i don't dispute sleep paralysis and the feeling of panic that it causes however a lot of people who deal with shadow people and the hat man I don't believe are having a sleep paralysis because in my situation with the shadow people and the hat man, I haven't been asleep. I was fully awake, not even in bed. According to Heidi Hollis, the shadow people again are these entities that hide in the corners. There are shadows. They're definitely from the underworld. They're not super positive beings, but they like to stay hidden. Now, according to Heidi as well, opposed to the shadow people is the hat man. Again, the hat man is like a three-dimensional being that you can't see through. Now, according to Heidi in her research, which I absolutely respect, is that the hat man is the boss of the shadow people. Heidi went on to say that she believes in a lot of situations where there is a haunting in the house. The haunting is actually being caused by a shadow person because Heidi said, just like Thunderstrike said, that these shadow people feed off of people's negative emotions like fear and anger. Shadow people do have the ability to cause illness in a person. They can also cause arguments within a home. And even though the damage done by shadow people is great, their power is very limited compared to their boss, the hat man. Now again, as I've said a few times, the hat man is a three-dimensional being. I've seen him. It's very freaky. You can't see through him. He is literally like a body. Now the hat man is totally black. He's wearing a trench coat and a black hat, almost like a fedora. His eyes, if you get a chance to see his eyes, are red. And his hands, a lot like Freddy Krueger's hands, are like claws, almost like razors. Now again, the shadow people, they like to stay in the corners. They don't particularly like for people to know that they're there. They can do the most damage with you not knowing they're there. But the hat man on the other side of the coin, now he likes for you to know he's there. He likes to challenge you. And according to Heidi and some other research that I did, there are a lot of people who have been in physical altercations with the hat man. They've been bitten by him, scratched by him, punched by him. And in fact, Heidi in her interview with Art Bell recounted a story where she had to attack a hat man to get him out of her personal space. Heidi Hollis also brought up this topic of astral travel, which is something I've never done, but I know people have had experiences of leaving their bodies. Of course, we know that the body and the soul reside together during this life, but upon death, our soul will leave our body. And people believe when they astral travel, that is what's happening. Now, most people who astral travel end up coming back to their body at some point. But Heidi Hollis was very, very worried about people who try to astral travel or do it regularly because apparently the hat man will sometimes wait for people to get in that position where the soul leaves the body so that they can pull the soul down into the underworld, leaving the body as an empty vessel to inhabit whatever else wants to come into it. 
In fact, this information matches another story I found from another Native American group in regarding shadow people and the hat man, and this is the Choctaw people. Now, in our last episode, we spoke about the black-eyed kids, and we talked about the Iroquois Native Americans and how they had the Otcon, which they believed was a dark entity. We talked about how the Iroquois believed in a good spirit and a bad spirit. Again, like most religions teach us, a god and a devil, dark and light. Well, the Choctaw also believed in the same thing, that there was a good energy and that there was a bad energy. The Choctaw also believed that in this scale, that there was good and bad, and there were all these supernatural beings that lived in between the good and the bad. Very similar to the Christian faith, right? You have a god and the devil, and then you have angels and demons. Well, the Choctaw did have an actual name for these shadow people. They called them the great black being or the soul eater. Now, obviously that's the English translation because they did not speak English before the English settlers came to the Americas. However, I am not gonna disrespect the Choctaw people by trying to say the names of these beings. Instead, I will just place the names right up here for you to see for yourself. But in saying that, the Choctaw people believed that by even mentioning the names of these shadow people, that you were wishing shadow people upon yourself. The Choctaw people also believed that with it within each human life, you had a good soul that resided with it within you and you also had a shadow being yourself. So kind of like Peter Pan when he goes into Wendy's bedroom and or the nursery and he's trying to catch his shadow and Wendy has to sew it back on him. This idea that your shadow has a life of its own, has a consciousness of its own. Well, the Choctaw people believed that when a person passed away, their soul inside their being, their ghost, was what left the body, went on to wherever it was going to go. But its shadow oftentimes hung around, and that was what the shadow people were. They were the conscious beings of people who had already passed before. Now, other people in modern times who have tried to study this shadow people phenomenon also have a theory that the shadow people might just be time travelers. Yes, you heard me right, time travelers. They believe, or some people believe, that shadow people are people coming from a different time in the future for us, and they're coming back in to watch what's happening now, us being their history. Now, I'm not saying that time travel does not exist. Honestly, in the last few years, I don't even know what exists and what doesn't exist anymore. We are all leaving the matrix now and more and more and more possibilities are opening up to us. So I'm not here to argue whether that's a real thing or not. Although I don't believe that shadow people are time travelers because in my opinion and in my experience, they have always been more on the violent side and I would hope that if people from our future, our descendants are coming back to watch us now, they would be a little bit more positive and kind. Now, a few years ago, there was a story of an entity that popped up online, a creepypasta story or an urban legend on the internet called the Slender Man. I'm sure most of us have heard of this Slender Man. We know that he was apparently a figment of someone's imagination. Now, in 2014, two young girls in Wisconsin held down their friend and stabbed her 19 times. Now, this poor child did survive the stabbing. A cyclist passing by found her crawling out of the woods where her two other friends had attempted to murder her. Now, at the trial, the two girls that did the deed claimed that they were influenced to do so by the Slender Man. Now, of course, the media had a heyday with this, and I am not qualified, nor do I want to speak on the mental health of these children. However, it has come to many researchers' attention that the Slender Man might not be as fantastical or fake 
as we believe he is. In fact, many researchers, including Heidi Hollis, believe that it is a possibility that the Slender Man is a another representation of the Hat Man. And since we do know that the Hat Man can communicate with people, and he's always trying to get people's souls, is it possible that these girls were being influenced by this entity? Who knows? All I know is that the truth sometimes is a lot stranger than fiction. And to the skeptics out there who think that this is just sleep paralysis, you might want to check your arrogance. Because I think most of us, as we grow and as we learn and we gain more wisdom, we realize there are things out there that we might not ever know. And when somebody has a paranormal experience like a shadow person or like a hat man, sometimes the PTSD is so real with them from that experience, you can't deny that something happened to them that was beyond sleep paralysis. So for all the skeptics out there, I would just beg for you to have an open mind and to listen to your fellow man when they try to tell you stories of unexplainable things that have happened to them. After all, man versus nature, nature always wins. All right, guys, so I did not tell you my experiences with the shadow people or the hat man in this episode because I want to ask you if you have had an experience with a shadow person or a hat man, send me your story if you want me to share your story in an episode. I would love to do an episode reading from your emails the things that you've gone through. Now, if you wanna share your story but you wanna stay anonymous, I totally respect that. In the email, just make sure you put that you don't want me to say your name and I'll be more than happy to keep you anonymous. Again, our email address is esotericatlanta at gmail.com. It will be down in the description box below. In that episode, I will also share my experiences with the shadow people and the hat man. All right, guys, have a wonderful day again. Thank you so much to everybody who is new to this channel. I love having you here. Um, I, again, check out David Zublik's channel, links below. Thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Roderick for helping me edit. And I will speak to you guys soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.